Hi. In today's video, we'll see some of the frequently asked interview questions in talent. And this one, I'm going to make a series of videos on the talent interview questions. And in today's video, we'll see some basic questions like to get started. And this is the list of questions which we are going to discuss in today's video. And there are some 10 questions. The first one is what is the difference between on component and on sub job? Okay. So for this question, uh, we'll see in job exactly like how the difference works. If you see the first question is the difference between on component okay and on sub job okay. I mean this is a component and this is a sub job. So if we need to execute this t Java row, t Java 2, only if the sub job is executed, then the on comp this t Java 2 will get executed. But whereas if you see the t Java 1, as soon as the component, the db component is executed successfully, the t Java 1 will get executed. So when you combine the Individual components, it will become a sub job. If you see T file is, is linked to T file input delimited and it's linked to T map and Oracle DB input. So these four components all together is called as a sub job. You can see that it's a categorized and you can see in some blue color. And these are individual components. And this is a basic difference. And we'll see when to use the on component token on sub job. Okay. In the T file list, I'm reading some files, and from that file, we're iterating each file and we are loading it to the database. So what happens uh, here? We have employee data and department, some data like employee department and region data. So as soon as once each files are getting loaded, uh, we need to commit it. So after the data is committed, we need to, once the data is loaded, we need to commit it. So for each source, the data should get committed. But if you see here, the on sub job, okay. Once all the files are processed, then we'll run sub job. And the sub job, I'm printing it as uh, on sub job, okay. And the uh, on component, I'm using uh, on component, okay, I'm displaying with message. Now let's run this one. So the T-Bridge job, I'm just opening the connection for that. So you can see that on component, is executed three times and on sub job okay. Mm. I just shown the debug run also to know the exact difference. Just on the basic run, click on the debug run, click on trace debug. So from the T file list, it will list all the files. So the T file input picked first file. See, it picked the first file and it loaded all the records. As soon as the DB component is loaded, you need to commit that. So for that reason, as soon as this individual component is executed, commit it. So you can see look on component, okay. And still the, still the sub job is running. So due to that, this is not getting executed on the on component, on, on sub job, okay component. Now resume the job. See, three times on component executed, and one time on sub job, okay. So just to iterate, on component is an individual component. And when we link the individual components, that will be marked as sub job. Now the next difference is we'll see what is the difference between T Java, T Java row, and T Java flex. So these are the custom codes available in Talent to execute some piece of Java code. First, we'll see by example. Okay, yeah. So T Java component is used to integrate your custom Java code into talent program. And it's execute, it's mainly used at the start of the job. And T Java has no, yes, T Java will not have any input and output components to that. We'll see that for the T Java. I'm going to the job. Here we have the T Java component. So mostly it will be used at the start or end of the job. You cannot use in the data propagation because it does not have any schema defined to that. The material input has some components, some schemas. If you link that to the T Java, it will not have any component. I will show that. And you can link it, but in the data propagation, it will not process any data because there are no schema defined to the Java component. 
so this is a t java and if you see the t java row so this component will propagate the data transformation so every time a t java row t java row component needs the input component because it has an input and output see you cannot so t java row see you are you can see some warning this component should have a input links so this component by the definition of t java row so the t java row applies ex exclusively to main part of the code and this component is an intermediate component and you are able to access the input, input flow so the t java row will be mainly used in the data propagation uh, it's act as t map so whatever transformation you can do it in the t map same transformations you can do in the t java row and third one is t java flex so this component has the benefits of both t java and t java row it can be used at the start of the job and also it can be used in the data propagation so whatever individually we do in the t java and t java row combinedly we can do in the t java flex i'll show that this is one thing and also no difference if you see here so all these three components are used to get the java custom code so it will be executed first but only once in sub job yes t java will be executed on only once and it requires input flow yeah so t java does not requires an input flow because there is no schema defined to that and in t java row and t java flex it, it can accept the input components it can be used to start up the job yes t java and t java will it can be used to start up the job but t java row you cannot use so these are the other differences of t java row and t java flex and the third question what we were saying is Uh, what is the difference between built-in and uh, repository? So, by definition, built-in all the information is stored locally in the job. You can enter, edit all the information manually. A repository all the information is stored in repository. You can import, read all the information into the job from repository. If you want to modify the information, you can take one of the following actions. Okay. But which one to use for built-in and repository? We'll see that. Okay. First, we'll see what is built-in and repository. So if you open any component, uh, for example, we need to read data from a file. I'll go for T file input delimited. So here, whatever information you, the property type is built in. So when you select as built in, you need to enter the information manually, the file name, row separator, field separator, and the, all the information, whatever you see in the component. And this is for the T file input delimited. Similarly, if you use any uh, DB components. Again, in this, all the the uh, property type is built in, so you need to enter the information manually. But if you select, okay, in the property type, if you select repository, all the information will be stored in this repository in this under the under the metadata. Whatever connections you define the metadata, you can reuse it. So basically, a built-in is designed only for the one-time use and for a particular job. A repository is somewhere used, you are saving somewhere, and whenever you want to call it. Call it or use it for multiple components. You can make use of the repository. The example: If you want to have the DB connections in multiple jobs, if you have some four to five jobs, and each time you need to enter the connection details manually, that is built in. So instead of manually updating the details for every component and in every job, you can define the connection in metadata repository that you can get it. So I just save the property type as repository, then save the connection. So all the details will be populated. Is the local host, database name. So if you want to edit that, uh, for some reason like the username got updated or the database, I mean some reason, so you can change it to built-in property and you can update the details. So this is one of the major difference between built-in and repository. And fourth one is what is context variable? A variable. Okay, first we'll see the definition. A variable can be set either at compile time or run time. It can be changed and allows values which would otherwise be hard coded to some more dynamic. Okay, and most of the context are there. Okay, so what happens if you need to define the connections? All this are stored in the properties, but there are some values where you need to use the value. So you execute some job. Wait, I'll show that. Okay, just delete this one. So context variable are used like any other variable in other programming languages. It's used to store the value. Let's run this job. So 
when this t file input delimited we are processing some records so after processing we need to know like how many records got processed so this information we can store it in database or we can send mail for auditing purpose so to process the data we, it should be stored in some variable so that variable is called as a context variable so here i'm just context dot con variable i'm just assigning that to int here And also this variable is used to pass the from parent one job to another, another job that is called parent to child job. This can be used. Now if you run this job, it will whatever number of rows we you have in this file, that data will be stored in this context variable. And this variable you can use it in the auditing purpose, or you can send mail, or you can log in the database. You cannot convert from class to string. Okay. So it's an integer type. And what we define, okay, string type. So just change it, the data type to in. Not convert from class integer to integer. Hmm. Okay, we'll see. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, we should assign now the NB line, it's not in. So, into the data type, and this is a variable. So you cannot directly assign it in the in data type. So five rows is processed and the total number of record processed are from the file is five. So it's stored in some context variable. And the other use of context variable is whenever you define the connection here, I told, okay, yeah, in this one. So this connection is specific for some dev environment. If you create the context variables, this variable can differ from each environment. For dev, you will have some DB connection details. And for UAT, you will have the separate host name for production. For each environment, you can use separate group names. I'll show that uh, context, create context group, some test. See here you can see the environment I landed. New and dev UAT and production. Mm, okay, database name server. username so each of this value will differ from each environment for dev it will have separate value and for prod will have separate value and for uat again will have separate values now if you see here when a job runs in uat you need to select the default variable as uat here you can just click on the context you can select here see so based on this you can uh, differentiate the connection between each environment and the other purpose is it will hold the value and you can pass this value from a parent job to child job or you can pass from one sub job to another sub job. And the fifth one is what is the default join model in TMAP? So the default join model is left out a join. I'll show that. So TMAPs allows you to join two components. So you have employee table and department table. If you want to join these two tables, we can make use of TMAP. So it's show that. Um, So this is the main component and define more component. So this will be the lookup for the, so this is a primary main table and this is a lookup table. In that select tmap, so just drag it and drop the employee ID. 
So if you see here, the default join model is left out a join in Tmap. And what are the join supported in Tmap? So we'll see what are join supported. So by default, Tmap supports inner join and left out a join. It's left out a join, left join, and inner join. And we'll see the next question is explain about Tmap. So we'll see a few things about Tmap. So Tmap is one of the uh, important component. It will be mainly used to process your data from input to output. So here you have the data in the T for the input delimited. And in between you have Tmap. And the third component is the output component. So Tmap acts as the middle component to process your data. And the other advantage of Tmap is you can apply the data transformation logic. So you have employee ID if you want to change to uppercase. Just click on the three dots. Click on string handling to upper uppercase. Yeah, this is one of the use case. And also based on your uh, requirement, you can apply the transformation for all the columns. And it also acts as in a, uh, you can apply some filter conditions. So if you have on the source employee data. So in employee data, you have department ID 90. If you want to load only the department 90 data for a particular uh, department, you can apply filters here. Just if department ID row dot equals dot equals And also you can join two tables. So some of the basic differences for Tmap for processing the data, you can filter the data, filter the rows, and you can join. And still there are many other things, but for now, these are the basic three things which we can make use of Tmap. And the other one is what is metadata? Okay, so metadata, okay. I think this question we can relate to built-in and repository. So whatever information we get from repository, repository that is defined in the metadata. Okay, so when metadata will be used is, so I have an input file input delimited component. If you see here, there are some schemas defined. Data. Click on next, and select the field separator. Set heading row as the column name, refresh preview. So mostly use metadata for DB connections and for this kind of uh, schema details where we no need to enter the column names manually. So now here, just in the property type, select repository and provide a connection name, like test we created. So if you do that, the schemas are automatically updated. So you no need to type the schemas manually. And this you can use in multiple jobs for multiple components. So when I told this metadata is linked to a repository and the other one is can we define the schema at runtime no, uh, we cannot define the schema at runtime because the schemas whatever we see here are hard coded and it's kept it's kept in the job oh, no, leave schema we have some 15 columns if you add a new column again uh, we have employee department name and for some reason you are adding department name for some use case but this department name will be not read from your from your job because this column name your job will be not able to read because you're not defining it. So you need to define at the start of the job and it's hard coded. You cannot change it. For that, we have different thing, but for now, we cannot edit the schema at runtime. So these are the 10 questions which we discussed. And next video, we'll see a few more questions. Thank you.